untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. For today's deck, my Patreon supporters voted that I should build a deck around Dying to Serve, a 3 mana rare enchantment from Crimson Vow, saying whenever you discard one or more cards, create a tapped 2 2 black zombie creature token, and this ability triggers only once each turn. So, not an inherently powerful card that will require quite a bit of work to build around it, and that's why I thought it would be a good idea for today's video to kind of guide you through my deck building process, since I'm often asked how I go about building decks in general. So, as you can see, I've got four builds of uh, Dying to Serve in front of me, starting out with Dying to Disturb, which was my first attempt at building around it, and of course, a great synergy with the Dying to Serve are these looting creatures, like We've got Pilfering Hawk that can spend a snow mana tap and then draw and discard. We've got Selhof and Tumor, which can tap, discard a creature card to draw a card, as well as a Suspicious Stowaway, which cannot be blocked, and when it deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card and then discard. So we can play these on turn two, on turn three, play Dying to Serve, and then immediately make an extra zombie token. And then if we get multiples of these two mana looting creatures in play, we can potentially trigger Dying to Serve in our turn, and then trigger it once again in the opponent's turn making two zombies per turn cycle, so we're trying to maximize a dying to serve that way. And then at the same time we're also discarding some of these disturbed creatures that we can get value from in the graveyard. Cards like the Hermit, which is also fine to just play a two mana to maybe counter an Alrond's Epiphany, or maybe a sweeper effect. We had the Binding Geist, which we could disturb to potentially shrink down opposing creatures, giving us a bit of creature interaction. Then Archivist also has great synergy with the Dying to Serve, and the Archive Haunt, especially once we disturb it, can also keep looting to trigger our three mana enchantment. And then we even tried out a few copies of Mirror Hall Mimic, which is fine to play on four mana, but can also be disturbed out of the graveyard for five mana for some great value. And then I also sprinkled in Thirst for Discovery as just a nice looting effect since we were in a two color deck with plenty of basic lands. And then a Thirst for Discovery would be an instant speed way of triggering Dying to Serve. So in general, this deck did a decent job of building around Dying to Serve, but it was just a little bit underpowered. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of interaction outside of the Disturb on Binding Geist for creatures and Hermit for non-creatures. We weren't really interacting with the opponent's game plan at all, and overall, if we didn't draw or Dying to Serve, the deck felt a little bit underpowered. But the main takeaways here were that these two mana looting creatures like Stowaway and the Entomber especially were quite good with Dying to Serve. Pilfering Hawk on the other hand not quite as good since we cannot play Hawk on 2, play Dying to Serve on 3 and then activate it right away to make a zombie, whereas we can with the Entomber and Suspicious Stowaway. So then I moved on to Black Red with a Dying to Learn which is pretty similar in its intent. We've got these two mana looting creatures with Plark, Dean of Chaos, which can tap to discard a card and draw a card. And then we also have Magmatic Channeler, which can tap to discard a card and then exile the top two cards of our library, choose one of them that we can play that turn. And as opposed to the blue-black deck, this deck has way more interaction with that one mana Blood Chief's Thirst as well as Frostbite. Then we also get to play with Skyclave Shade, a creature we can easily discard and then get value from out of the graveyard by playing a land with Landfall. And the Skyclave Shade also plays well with Academic Dispute, which lets us learn. And learning, of course, as you know now, also lets you discard a card instead of grabbing a card from our sideboard. And that's another way to potentially trigger our three mana Dying to Serve. So we've got a few ways to learn here between Hunt for Specimens, Igneous Inspiration, and Academic Dispute, which we can pair with the Skyclave Shade to take out three toughness creatures from the opponent. And then, of course, we've got some lessons in the sideboard that we can potentially learn for as well. I was particularly impressed by Illuminate History, which also worked quite well with Dying to Serve, even though it only makes a single zombie token. So this deck had more interaction, so it was better at staying alive against aggressive creature decks than the blue-black deck. But it did lack a little bit of late game power, even though we can start looping Skyclave Shade out of the graveyard and we can eventually get a 4 4 channeler. The deck felt a little bit too small, and while the deck was reasonable at making zombies with Dying to Serve, we were often only making a single zombie per turn cycle since we didn't have as many instant speed ways to discard as in the blue black deck. So then we moved on to Serve and Return, a Grixis color to Dying to Serve deck, which combined the best looters from both the blue deck and the red deck, with a 2 mana Suspicious Stowaway and Plark Dean of Chaos. 
We also have our hunt for specimens to learn and potentially discard and trigger dying to serve that way as well. Then our dying to serve, Prismari command, which lets us choose a bunch of different modes, including target player draws two cards and then discards two cards, which is a way to trigger dying to serve at instant speed. And that also allows us to ramp into our five drops. And as you can see, we're shifting into a reanimation deck with Antgar's Awakening, returning a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, as well as a return upon the tide, which can also be foretold to then later cast it for four mana. And since we're discarding cards anyway, we might as well put some expensive creatures in the graveyard to then reanimate, which is why we have our three copies of Hullbreaker Horror, the 7-8 that can return permanents and spells to the opponent's hand if we cast something. Then we've got Dreadfee's Demon, a 6-6 flyer that at the beginning of our end step makes us sacrifice a non-demon creature and then creates a token that's a copy of Dreadfee's Demon, also plays well with the tokens from Dying to Serve. And then finally Toxtrol the Corrosive, a 7-7 that will put slime counters on opposing creatures, giving them minus one, minus one for each slime counter. And when those creatures eventually die, they get replaced by 1-1 one, one black slug creature tokens we control, and we can sacrifice them to draw more cards. So by shifting into this reanimation game plan, I try to solve the problem of a lack of a powerful late game. Now the problems with this build is still that we kind of lack some early interaction. And also if the opponent manages to deal with our stowaway and plarg, then we won't be able to trigger dying to serve as easily. And then it's going to take a while for us to actually discard these expensive creatures and reanimate them. So we would usually get run over before we manage to get them in play. So that's deck number three. And then I try to put everything together in a final build here titled Served Cold, which kind of combines the reanimation angle with some of the lessons I learned in the first couple decks. So we have more cheap interaction now with Fading Hope returning target creature to its owner's hand. Mana value three or less we also get to scry one. And we also have two copies of Divide by Zero, which can act as a bound spell, a counter spell. And by learning we can also discard and draw. But we of course still have kind of a sideboard lesson package. And then we get to play with Selhof and Tumor, as well as Suspicious Stowaway. One of my potential worries with the Entumor is that we wouldn't have enough creatures to discard, but that hasn't been a major problem so far, since we have these eight creatures we're happy to discard, and in the late game we can usually discard additional copies of Entumor and Stowaway if we don't have time to cast them. And then the Stowaway can often transform into Seafaring Werewolf if we pass a turn without casting any spells, since we do have quite a few instants at three mana, so then the Seafaring Werewolf can start providing extra card advantage to maybe hit or land drops and start hard casting or seven drops as well. And then Thirst for Discovery also becomes much better in a two-color deck as opposed to a three-color deck, as we'll have more basic lands to potentially discard to it. And then that can also trigger Dying to Serve at instant speed. And then we still have our six reanimation spells, down from eight, as well as our eight reanimation targets. And then our mana base includes a few creature lands with Hall of the Storm Giants, Hive of the Eye Tyrants, 12 basic lands to discard to Thirst for Discovery, which is a reason to play your non-basics first in this deck and then eight of our dual lands here. And then going over the sideboard, we've got a couple lessons with environmental sciences times two, teachings times two, necrotic fumes can be a nice removal spell combined with dying to serve tokens. We've got introduction to prophecy for more card draw and mascot exhibition as an extra finisher. So yeah, let's try this deck out. Won't be playing this in ranked because despite all my efforts, the deck is still not very good, but hopefully we can have some fun in the play queue. So let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing a dying to serve or a reanimation spell, but with both stowaway and entumor, we've got a decent chance of drawing into one of those. So I'll try. And then I should be hanging on to my basic lands because of the thirst for discovery here. So our opponent's a black snow deck. I guess I can uh, play stowaway. If our opponent had a Shambling Ghast early, I would have probably played Entumor first. Right, Curse of Leech is gonna start draining me, that's fine. So let's attack, discard Hullbreaker. Divide by zero is useful too. So I could let it transform to night time and then bounce the curse. And then have a seafaring werewolf. Don't hate that idea.
And then probably bounce the Leeching Lurker before it gets a chance to hit me. And then don't think I'm discarding from my hand. So instead I could learn for... Let's get Sciences. Always a safe bet. Opponent replays their Lurker. There's our Dying to Serve. So now we kind of want a double spell to transform it back to daytime. So I can hit with a Werewolf. And then could also set up my reanimation for next turn. But I kind of like Entumor plus Environmental Sciences, which will flip it back to daytime. And then next turn I can play Dying to Serve and potentially trigger it both in my turn and the opponent's turn. Another curse. So hang on to my basic land. And then we can maybe force the opponent to play a sweeper before we actually reanimate. Alright, what do I want to discard? Probably a land still. Opponent does have Hive of the Eye Tyrant, so maybe I should be discarding Horror, so I have two creatures to potentially reanimate, but I can still do that end of turn, and Entumor only discards creatures. So yeah, let's uh, discard a land. And then I can foretell Return. And then trigger Dying to Serve again in the opponent's turn with Entumor, discarding the whole Breaker potentially. Right, Sedge more Witch, so unlikely to see a Sweeper in our near future. Although I guess our opponent could blood on the snow and get the Witch back. And now if I find like a one or two mana spell, I could potentially reanimate Hellbreaker Horror and bounce something right away. So step one, attack with our zombies and stow away. Alright, I could discard Awakening and then pay the one black mana to bring a creature back. I guess it works. And that will give me an extra creature to discard to the Entumor potentially. But I think I'm okay reanimating my Author Hullbreaker now. And then I can use the 5 mana return as opposed to the 4 mana one. Alright, opponent does have Infernal Grasp, which they were hanging on to. Fair enough. So we can still block the pest with our Entumor. Which is why we're not tapping it right away. And a vampire spawn, so opponent trying to drain us to death here. They're down to one card in hand, so don't hate my position. Alrighty, so this seems like a good turn to... Um, Reanimate our hull breaker, and then we can also play Thirst at instant speed to maybe trigger it to save it from removal. So step one is still gonna be to attack. Unless I wanna bounce the vampire spawn. But I'm okay if it eats one of my zombies here since we're making two per turn. And I wanna start getting in some extra damage.
And then still way I can discard to the Entomber as well. Keep hitting my land drops. And then reanimate Hullbreaker. And Thirst will also be a way to trigger Dying to Serve for what it's worth. Alright, so Kicked Thirst is probably worth bouncing back. Could also bounce itself back to my hand. But we can do that next turn. So Bounce Bloodsheaf's Thirst. And... Ooh, Toxrill Hardcast seems quite tempting. So then now... What do I want to get rid of? Probably don't need Fading Hope, even though it's a cheap way to trigger Hullbreaker. I guess I should keep Fading Hope and Toxrill. So I think we ditch Stowaway and Thirst to keep Return to maybe reanimate Toxrill if it does eventually die. And then I wouldn't be using the Entomber since we already made a zombie anyway. So now I probably want to attack before showing them Toxrill. Even though I would prefer them not to trade off here. Alright, opponent jumps a bunch. That's fine. And then still away can go. And then play Toxtrill with Fading Hope available. And this can return a curse back, I think. Finish off the vampire spawn. And even if they have a blood on the snow, I can counter it thanks to the hull breaker. I've got another instant in hand. So, don't hate my spots, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, so got to see Dying to Serve in action, our reanimation game plan also came together nicely. So, quite happy with how this played out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, fine hands, missing Dying to Serve, but still we can set up our reanimation game plan. And then, not sure if I need double blue or double black even though I want to keep basics in hand for Thirst. Alright, so... Play a Stowaway, and then we can play this on blue. Keep Swamp in hand. And then up against another blue-black deck. And we get to start drawing with our Werewolf, so... Don't mind that. And then we'll pass with our two 3-mana instants available. Meathook Massacre for one. I could divide the Massacre itself. Could also bounce my Werewolf back. And then next turn I can replay the Werewolf and Foretell, which wouldn't transform it back to Daytime. Seems fine. And then learn for... maybe Environmental Sciences. can also search up an extra basic land to discard to Thirst. Right, they've got an Infernal Grasp this time. So not super interested in reanimating the Stowaway. Put in those a Field of Ruin for my Hive. Probably just pass with Thirst for Discovery available. Could have also cast Sciences and then played the basic land. Okay. So Toxtril I can discard. And then maybe discard a Shipwreck Marsh as well. Keep the double Hullbreaker as creatures we can play at instant speed. 
And then I could reanimate Toxrill, Sciences for Basics, so we can cast our Hullbreaker next turn. Even though fully expecting Toxrill to die here. Opponents not presenting a whole bunch of threats themselves, so Toxrill is unlikely to really do much. Could also pass to just sacrifice Toxrill if they try and kill it. That opponent's gonna counter a reanimation spell instead. Only one mana thanks to Wash Away here. And then probably see a Field of Ruin end of turn. Alright, so as the dust settles, we've got double Holdbreaker in hand, which is not bad. And Thirst for card advantage, but it's not really presenting any threats themselves. Right, it's gonna be Leer, which can replay Infernal Grasp. And we don't really have an answer to Leer. So, yeah, I guess we'll just uh, pass it back. This will force them to kill the Holebreaker. And then hopefully the second copy sticks around. Opponent does have a wash away they can cast, but Leer would make our spells uncounterable. I think I still go for the surprise factor of a second Hullbreaker instead. Alright, successful ambush. And a Dreadfeast Demon, not looking too exciting at the moment. So Hullbreaker can attack, and then Thirst being an instant means we can potentially counter some big expensive spells like Blood on the Snow. So probably no real reason to do anything else, just keep double Thirst available. Could have also bounced the Sedgemore Witch preemptively. Opponent replays Leer. So we'll return Leer back. And a test of talents to counter. We will counter back. So I cannot bounce my own spell back since it's you don't control. So, we'll f be forced to bounce the Test of Talents instead. And then discard... Maybe a Dreadfeast Demon so we can reanimate it. Alongside... Doesn't matter too much in Tumor, I guess. And discard a Basic. And then Fading Hope can bounce both the Witch and the Token. Still doesn't quite give me lethal. Um, I think I hang on to Fading Hope as a cheap counter with a Hullbreaker. And then for now I could bring back maybe even a second Hullbreaker or Toxrill. And bounce the token in the process. I think a second Hullbreaker is probably the way to go. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, sweet, so Hullbreaker gets it done against blue-black control. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we're missing our Dying to Serve enchantments, but still we can discard some large creatures, and then hopefully we find a reanimation spell, or Dying to Serve to start making zombies. Another stowaway. 
And if we're up against a green aggro deck, the interaction from divides can be quite useful. Maybe more of a ramp deck. And then we'll play a second stowaway. Not as good as having a split between Entomer and Stowaway if we do eventually play our enchantment, because then we won't be able to necessarily discard in the opponent's turn. But for now, we can keep looting. We'll bounce the pack leader so the pack song pup doesn't pick up a counter. And then Awakening is what we'll eventually need. So I don't think I can get rid of it. But we will need to draw some lands as well. And then I'll be able to transform both stowaways after discarding Hullbreaker. Okay. Nice. So now... I'm tempted to discard Divide by Zero. And then Foretell Return so I can cast it next turn, still keep up Fading Hope. And then maybe cast the Awakening the turn after. So it turns to nighttime. We've got some interaction to maybe prevent any fight spells from taking place. So I could bounce the pack leader now before the pump triggers, but I think I'd rather hang on to Fading Hope as insurance. Could also see them play a second spell, turn it back to daytime, but they don't. Alright, so step one attack. Get to draw two. And then we've got a lot of options here, but I'm liking Return Upon the Tide, bring back Hullbreaker, keep up Fading Hope. Since Toxtril, while great, still has to contend with some very large creatures, whereas Hullbreaker plus a one mana instant seems much harder for the green deck to get past. And then we can maybe bring back Toxtril next turn. Pub triggers. And our opponent attacks. They will get to draw a card of the pack leader. But I'll just block it here and should be able to beat most shenanigans. A witch's web to pump it. Okay, still not quite large enough, so they need to commit another spell. Another witch's web. So I think we bounce the witch's web as opposed to the pack leader, so we don't get blown out by snakeskin veil. And then I can bounce the pack song pump as well. And then dying to serve would have been a fine addition to here. But our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, this hand is ready to reanimate. On turn four, thanks to Return Upon the Tide. Could also place Stowaway on turn two. Depends if we expect our Stowaway to survive. And how impactful reanimating one of these two is going to be. Opponent on some sort of soul tie deck. So reanimating a demon or toxtral on an empty board isn't all that appealing. So I could see playing the stowaway first. Even though it's not super likely to stick around. Right, Fading Hope also very effective against our 7 mana creatures. So this seems like a fine outcome. And then it is night time. Keep my basic land in hand for thirsts. And I think just replay the werewolf now. 
there is an argument for going for thirsts, so then on turn 4 I can foretell plus play the werewolf. Although I'm pretty happy to keep my swamp in hand. I guess I could just discard some of my 7 drops instead. Alright, dying to serve is going to be great even if it switches back to daytime. So step 1 attack. Alright, that worked. And then now I'm liking Entumor plus Fortel. And then Entumor can trigger Dying to Serve if we play it next turn. Usually don't want to play this unless you can make a zombie in the same turn. There's usually better ways to spend our mana. Deluge, so we could see a Meat Hook Massacre for 3 next turn, clean up my board. But no double black. Ooh, Halpack Piper as a 4 4, because it's nighttime, gets to trigger right away. Finds another Piper. Sir Point's also trying to go big here. So. I could reanimate one of my creatures. Question is which one? Start by hitting with the Werewolf. Another Dying to Serve. Could also play Dying to Serve, but that would be most of my turn gone. So I think I prefer reanimating. And then, against what our opponent is doing, don't hate Dreadfeast Demon, but you can make an argument for all three of these. Toxrill can shrink down their 4 4, although it's still pretty big. So maybe we go for Demon, just to try and kill them faster. And then... Reanimate it. And then it's going to be tricky what to sacrifice to the Demon, although it looks like they have a Fading Hope anyway. So it could actually be a weird advantage for us that it's nighttime and they won't be able to activate the Piper. And have a 4-4 instead. Now we're in a bit of an awkward spot with no reanimation spells left in hand. Ideally draw land so I can play a double dying to serve and just make some zombies instead. Opponent's gonna dig up a land. So we're at 16. And then first one attack with my werewolf to see if I can find an untapped land here. I can. So I can play double dying to serve. And then I can use the Entumor in the opponent's turn. It's going to switch back to daytime, so then I'll have ways to trigger our enchantment both in our turn and the opponent's turn. So, bound spells quite effective against our 7 mana creatures, less effective against an active dying to serve, which can make multiple zombies. Now they can use the Piper, so that's potentially dangerous. Ooh, puts in a Hole Breaker Horror. Yeah, that's a good one. And then discard. Could discard my own Hole Breaker in case I can reanimate it somehow. Don't see myself really using the Entumor anytime soon. All 
right, let's switch us back to knights. Fading hope's not bad. So just attack with a werewolf. Alright, so I would like to hit my land drop. I could thirst, I could use the entombmer. And then I want to keep up as much interaction as possible. Now I could try and bounce the Holebreaker Horror before doing anything else. With like a Fading Hope. And then if it switches back to daytime, I guess they can put it back in place. Ideally I only cast a one spell here. Or I could also bounce the Piper. Alright, that worked. So now I'm just going to use Entombor in my turn to make a few extra zombies. Discarding, let's say, Dreadfeast Demon. Or maybe Toxrill since I have another in hand. Ideally draw land. But I don't want to cast another spell since I want to keep it nighttime. And then I can Thirst to discard again in the opponent's turn, make more zombies. And I've got a divide by zero for interaction. Alright, opponent's got their own Toxrill, so we can divide that. And that should be game. Alright, sweet, so played against a deck, trying to do some similar things. But instead of reanimating, just trying to cheat them into play with the Howl Pack Piper. So, yeah, we got to see our Dying to Serve make quite a few zombies. So hopefully I was able to highlight some of the insights that go into deck building and my deck building process in general that you can potentially apply to your own creations. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.